this uh, heart-wrenching video. And uh, I don't think I need to add anything on top of this what we've seen for a second. Uh, uh, I want to mention in the past summer where the characters in the environment or the diet in all of the local part of Pakistan. 33 million people have been affected. 1,700 people have died, including children. And standing crops more than 4 million acres of land have completely been washed away. About 2 million houses partially are completely damaged. And as we've seen, the estimates of World Bank, they figured an amount of $30 billion as uh, loss economy and damage to our properties and assets. Now, the point of issue is that we are one of those countries around the globe which do not emit more than 0.8% of greenhouse gases. And yet we have become victim of this uh, raising flux, which has ravished uh, our country, which can't be explained enough in words. Ladies and gentlemen, therefore it's very important that uh, no other country should become victim of this climate-induced Floods. We have suffered, we have become a victim of it for no rhyme or reason, no further past. Now it's high time for this August assembly to consider compassionate and go to the left of this situation and find out why we should. For a few people, another country to become a victim of this uh, situation which uh, happened to us. Today we are still going through the phase of relief and rescue and stagnating water is a very big threat to the health of our people, our children, our mothers, our daughters and millions of people who are uh, marooned by water. And health, obviously, is a big challenge for us. So we need to look after this, these millions of people who are uh, exposed to serious diseases like malaria and many other life threatening disease. So what I'm saying is that uh, this is a situation is a postcard from the edge of vulnerability. Pakistan's century breaking flood is sharply focusing minds not only in this law or the peace of the countries. And I must add, and add with serious concern, that about 650,000 children are pregnant and close to childbirth under open skies. I myself have been to tents and seen mothers giving birth to a child night before or um, just a few hours before that particular place. So, 
It's a epitome of helplessness and which must not happen again. Easier said than done. But then it's our collective responsibility, our duty, especially global north, which has to realize its responsibilities and opinions made Paris Conference and then New Scotland. Talking in terms of cents and dollars, there was a commitment of hundred million dollars. Now, how much out of this commitment has been realized is a question mark. And how can we think in your remotest imagination why we are dealing with relief efforts after risk levels, of course, our uh, friendly countries and many strikers around the globe have checked in, they have contributed, including Norway and many other countries, Muscle and many other countries around the globe. I will keep on naming them and this is not finished. But is it enough to bridge the gap? The answer is a big no, because we have to now deal with repairing our completely smashed infrastructure. 8,000 kilometers of roads, metal roads, have become rubble. Hundreds of bridges and flyovers and underpasses completely washed away. So this is not possible to handle it alone. It has to be a combination of our efforts. We have already repurposed and redirected our foreign annual contributions in terms of donations or soft loans and our own resources, meager resources, which were originally meant for building our economy, agriculture, industry, education, health, have all been redirected towards meeting this challenge. And yet it is not enough. So what is happening in Pakistan will surely not remain in Pakistan, as made evident by the recent climate impacts in Nigeria and South Sudan. These widespread impacts showcase the globalization of climate change, which will undoubtedly require a collective approach to help the most vulnerable adapt. Pakistan is acutely aware of the impact climate change can have on the lives and choices of the marginalized, the disabled, the poor, and the socially excluded. We already have the working infrastructure for one of our most efficient social security programs in the world called the very former, late former Prime Minister Benji Bhutto after her name, where is it in support program, which was immediately operationalized to transfer response needs directly to impact population. Our largest adaptation program, the Living Endless Initiative, will cut across the entire country, like the Great River that has fed and sustained Pakistan for six years. And this initiative will intervene in 25 areas to include communities in flood management and detoxication of the rivers. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we urgently need to put our resources in lost livelihoods and income streams, build climate resilience infrastructure, conduct climate risk and vulnerability assessment, and put in place multi health warning systems. To make sure that no one is left behind, climate finance is integrated to inclusive, adaptive, and resilient to recovery the climate devastated global south. Financing will be a crucial element in Pakistan's climate action journey and implementation of NDCs. COP27 is an option to capitalize the adaptation fund and introduce agility and speed in countries that need to build resilience, simplify long-term climate financial instruments that are badly needed lack of capacity deficits in the developing countries right now. The task is Herculean and we are racing against time. Yet, Alhamdulillah, we are resilient people, but we cannot do it alone. This call comes at a pivotal time for humanity. We must address climate change impacts with the urgency that it requires. The burden of climate change must be shared, and this is very important, ladies and gentlemen, equitably rather than equal. Building adaptive capacity for developing countries and vulnerable communities must no longer be a measure of charity. That's very important. It is about climate justice and fair play. This is an opportunity for us to seize the moment and secure the future of the most vulnerable population of the world. And I thank you and would like to appreciate your coming to this guy. God bless you.